Hello, this video is going to be dedicated to talking about switch statements, which are our second main type of selection in programming languages, along with if statements. Now, if statements are going to remain your, your number one go-to statement, but we have got to be aware of how switch statements work as well. So, and hopefully there are a few different names for these. They're also occasionally called case select or switch case or match case. Match case is what Python calls it. I will say lots of programmers won't really know what these are or will not really use them very often, but they could come up in paper too. So we have got to be fully aware of how these work. Now, these are used when a variable's value directly determines the decision being made. I've underlined directly because arguably a variable's value always or almost always determines the decision being made, but here it's a direct determination. So here is how a switch statement might look like. We've got one input line at the top. At the bottom here is our switch statement. So this program is asking the user to enter the country calling code. So by this, I mean at the start of phone numbers, as you probably know, it'll be something like plus four, four, if you are in the UK, then it will be someone's number. So that first two digits is the country calling code, which varies depending on the country you're in. And here I'm writing a program which is going to allow the user to enter a calling code and it'll tell the user what country that's from. So I could do this using an if statement, but here I've chosen to use a switch statement. We need to, in OCR exam reference language, start with the word switch and we end with end switch in a similar way to we end using end if. Unlike if statements, in OCR ERL we have colons, which makes it more like Python really. So we've got colons at the end of our first line and each of our cases. So we write the word switch, then we write the variable we are using. This is a variable which is directly determining the decision being made. So here it's country code is determining what happens. We then have multiple cases. It can be as many as you want, really, but at least one will be a case. Now, a case is a particular condition within it. And so us saying case 44, this is comparing country code to 44. If country code is 44, it's going to print United Kingdom. If country code is 34, it's going to print Spain and 45 Denmark. So it's comparing directly our variable to the number or whatever is after the case. And the line of code or lines of code beneath each case and indented will run if that case is true. Finally, we've got a default case. Now the default case is most similar to else in if statements. So the default case has got nothing after it. And the same over an else, we not have any condition after it. This runs if all of the previous cases weren't true. So you don't have to have a default case, but it's a good idea to, so you cover other possibilities. Okay, so let's look at how this might work. If I type in, say, let's do 45, which is the da Danish calling code. So country code is 45 now. We check against each of our cases one by one, top to bottom. So 45 is not 44, 45 is not 34. The 45 is 45, therefore we print Denmark. And it won't run the default case because like else it gets skipped if previous ones were true. If I type in my country code 232, which Google reliably tells me is Sierra Leone, well, it compares 232 to 44, that's not equal. It compares it to 34, that's not equal. It compares it to 45, that's not equal. And so our program is gonna say, it doesn't know what this calling code refers to. It's going to run the default case. Now, if you're given a choice to write code, you probably don't need to use it. If you're happy using if statements, you're welcome to use if statements. There is a benefit to switch in that it can be more concise than if statements. When you're only ever comparing, you're only ever using equals equals. If you're doing greater than or less than, you can't use switch. But if you're only ever doing equality, you can use switch. And it is a little bit more concise, I would argue. So let's say we're doing a different example this time with a string. I'm asking the user to enter a tube line of the London Underground. As you might know, they've got different colors representing each line. Jubilee line is gray, metropolitan is magenta, and so on. We are entering a tube line, and it's telling us what color this line is represented by. And this is a candidate for switch because I'm only ever testing for equality. If I was doing greater than, less than, like I say, I couldn't use switch. But here, I can use switch because I'm just testing for whether they are equal to each other. So here is how I might rewrite it using switch, which for some reason has come up a bit, bit longer, but I would argue this is more concise. 
Because in my if statement, I'm having to write my variable on every single condition. I'm also having to write equals equals on every single condition. And in ERL, I've got to write then at the end. Of course, in Python, you could just do a colon. So I would argue it's a little bit more concise. If you're writing it in an exam or typing it on a computer, I would say switch would be a bit quicker to do. So therefore, it's a bit more concise, a bit better for you. The computer doesn't really care what you use. Both do the same thing according to it. Check the syntax, make sure you're happy with it, make sure you understand the kind of sequence of how it gets checked, top to bottom, like if statements, and understand that default is just like else.